Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, looking at uh, Imam Razi's discussion on guidance and its essence and its, na its nature. And <clears throat> we had stopped at this paragraph. إِذَا سَبَدَ هَذَا فَنَقُولُ أَلُقُولُ مُسْتَرِبَةٌ وَالْحَقُّ سَعْبٌ so in the last session we looked at how we looked at two things we looked at two things first um, reason is necessary necessary for understanding necessary for guiding us uh, in matters it can guide us and also then if it cannot guide us if there are matters which are beyond its uh, limit limits then it tells us that you know so it is Reason is self-reflective as well, and that's a great thing about it. So self-reflection means that it's possible for it to be aware of its own shortcomings. And finally, it can also lead us to guidance. Lead us to guidance in the sense that although it realizes that in certain matters it... Uh, cannot provide us guidance it leads us to resources where we can find guidance and once we have those resources it can help us to decide whether those resources are reliable or not then so, from this we conclude that reason is necessary but but it is not self-sufficient reason is necessary but it is not self-sufficient so especially reason is not self-sufficient in metaphysical matters matters related to the creator the essence of reality purpose of life and the nature of our ultimate destination and things like that but reason does uh, lead us to or point towards the resources where we can find such clues resources which can provide us guidance towards the uh, find some answers regarding these matters and one of those resources are the messengers messengers of God the revelation and It does point towards the fact that those messengers can be trusted once we realize that they are truthful and consistent in their message. But even once we have accepted the, the authority of messengers and uh, revelation we does need reason to understand their message so we does need uh, reason to understand their message
to understand the message and reason also tell us that even once we have the messenger message we are never sure beyond doubt whether their message is correct one because we have we have no resources to we have no resources to verify their message beyond doubt the veracity of their message beyond doubt and the third thing is so we can, we can never reach absolute certainty as long as we are human as long as we are living in this world human limitations so we and in that sense it's a test or trial the life itself is a trial and the path to the truth is also a trial and that's why imam radi says that we need god's uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help even we need his help in the sense that he reveals his truth to us after our own faculties have failed so that's the great bounty and so his help we need but we also need his help to be steadfast in this trial in our search for truth because since we are never beyond doubt we are never 100% certain we are never we can never achieve absolute certainty in this world we need god's uh, help to keep steadfast on this path to the search for truth uh and this trial where this life and the destiny test us as to our commitment to the ultimate truth um, we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help so the help is needed uh, in in all these uh, senses and ultimately as we will see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, wants from us is sincerity in the search for truth humility because the reason realizing its limits is part of that hum humility and if those who don't realize this um, these limitation and their arrogance you know those ultra rationalist philosophers and theologians then they sort of uh, you know transgress this humility which uh, and this sincerity uh, and they think that they can they are self sufficient they can 
you know, tread this path on their own. Um, and that's why ultimately this sincerity plus um, humility plus um, steadfastness in the wake of external enemies of truth and internal enemies of truth. The external enemies of truth are those ideologies which are, you know, either don't um, care about truth and they are, their motto is something else, you know, pride or nationalism or making heaven on this earth or something else. So these are external enemies. Internal enemies are our own desires, uh, our own vanity, our arrogance and all those. So in all these three things, once we have sincerity and humility, we need steadfastness. And this steadfastness, we need help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, constantly. Otherwise, you know, and this uh, humility is um, expressed in what uh, you know the prophets and the only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have said uh, throughout uh, the history of this search for truth and this Uh, commitment to the truth that ma abadna ka hakka ibadatika hakka ibadatika even those who have had the pleasure of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way in which the doubts almost transcend them at the end they say ma abadna ka hakka ibadatika we haven't showed our commitment to you as we should have shown ma'arafna ka hakka ma'arfatika we haven't known you as you should be known so that's a humility and that humility um, is the key to this humility and sincerity and steadfastness is the key to this uh, the success through which we can be guided to the ultimate truth and this cannot happen this cannot it's not possible without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help because we are not self-sufficient again don't have enough internal resources to you know do this on our own all these three three things um, that's why and this um, and these points are made clear in one of the statements which uh, has been attributed to different Muslim scholars uh, among Mu'tazlas and among um, other Muslim schools, even Ibn Taymiyyah, which makes it clear that the real thing is uh, the sincere search for truth, for the truth. The ultimate truth which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and her sincere search for truth which is done with humility and steadfastness 
while seeking, constantly seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help by not being arrogant, by not being insincere. And if we do that, then whether we are right or wrong, ultimately the hope is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will vindicate us by revealing to us the secret of part of the secrets of his treasures of uh, uh, ultimate truth so that's why for example it, uh, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah says that Kullu man ijtahada fi talabil haqqi Whosoever, Kulluman, whosoever, whosoever strives, Ishtahada, strives, makes utmost effort with sincerity, humility, and steadfastness, Fi Talabil Haq. In search for for the truth and the truth alone for who mazurun he or she is vindicated in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the uh, in the eyes of the truth the reality Asaba or Wakta. It doesn't matter whether he or she is right or wrong in a particular matter. And Sivan Kana Zalika Filosule or Avil Furue. It doesn't matter whether it is related to minor matters, the matters of conduct, or about the major matters, the, ma the matters of the truth, the matters of the uh, ultimate truth, the matters of the, metaf the metaphysical truth. It doesn't matter who whosoever strives and search for truth with sincerity, with humility, with steadfastness, without the, the arrogance of ultra rationalists, without any reason, without any um, factual evidence. Think that uh, reason can, you know self-sufficiently lead them to the ultimate truth if we do that then we are vindicated whether we make we are able to you know get to the truth or not so 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 that's the thing and that that's the same um idea is being um conveyed by uh, imam razi in this last paragraph so let us look at this paragraph again and see if we need to add anything so al uqulu mustaribas human reason is discontented human rational self is discontented we are restless why are we restless because we long for the truth our reason longs for the tr ultimate truth but it realizes that it cannot reach that truth on its own it is not self-sufficient so that's why it's restless and it is also rest restless because the truth will haqqu sabun because the truth is difficult and the truth is difficult because of two reason and there again we need the guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the, these two reasons so al haqqu sabun the truth is difficult ultimate truth of difficult why there are two ways it is difficult in itself because it's beyond our reason it transcends our reason power of our reason transcend 
So that's where that's why we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. So that's where revelation comes. The truth reveal itself to humans through the messengers. So al sabun That's to it's by very it's because of the powerlessness of our reason, our faculties of craft. It is so that's one reason uh, the truth is difficult. The other reason truth is difficult is that even when the truth is revealed to us, because of our limitations, because of our limitations, because of our finitude, we are never sure, we are never absolutely certain that this is the truth. Because there are more than one claims as to the nature of that ultimate truth, even as far as the revelation is concerned, because there are true revelations and then there are false revelations from the shaitan. So again, we need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us differentiate between the true revelation and the revelation from shaitan and also help us to deal with our uncertainty which which is the outcome of our finitude and our human uh, limitations so these are two uh, reasons why the truth is difficult and the second reason um, goes on to he goes on to uh, expand it a bit more, Imam Radi, al afkaru mukhtalita. al afkaru mukhtalita. So there are different claims as to what the ultimate truth is. So there are some people who think that reason is self-sufficient. So based on reason, they they make up stuff about that's through philosophies and some sort of rationalist religions and then there is uh, there are other counterclaims by false prophets and false uh, messiahs and false agents of shaitan so due to those reasons all these claims about the ultimate truth are compounded in such a way that in them truth and falsehood become so mingled that it's hard to differentiate the truth from the falsehood and the true prophet from the false prophets. And then again we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. So the, in, in all that sense, uh, truth is difficult and in all that sense we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and that's why not many people are immune from the error as far as the ultimate truth are concerned so everybody make mistakes because of these reasons but as I said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't mind us making mistake as long as we are sincere in our search for truth as that quote from Imam Ibn Taymiyyah says the same thing وَلَمْ يَسْلَمْ مِنَ الْغَلَطِ إِلَّا الْقَلُمْ إِلَّا الْقَلُمْ So from this Imam Radhi drives this uh, uh, amazing conclusion that فَوَجَبَ أَنَّ الْهِدَايَةُ So it's, it's necessary that guidance cannot come and the uh, and the revelation of the truth or the cognition of the truth or the recognition of truth cannot be without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and his guidance. And his guidance of both sorts. So, so guidance in the sense that uh, there are two types of guidance. Uh, so because the al-haq is difficult for all those reasons we just looked at, it says it follows that we can't have guidance we can't 
reach the truth without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help, absolute help. To get this absolute help, we need to show our absolute helplessness. So guidance cannot be without Allah. And guidance is of two types. Al-Hidayah. Guidance of two types. Hidayah to Tawfiq. In the sense that he reveals his truth to us. Or he shows his truth to us through his message. And it keeps our hearts steadfast on, 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 on the truth even in the face of the doubts in all the adverse circumstances. That's Hidayatul Tawfiq. And Hidayatul Irshad uh, is the second one, Hidayatul Irshad, which is that he sends his revelation, his messengers who call us to the truth. So that's Hidayatul, Hidayatul Irshad. But even with, with that, the prophets co uh, come, but even in the presence of the prophet, even their family members, you know, some of them don't recognize the truth. Because ultimately, Hidayatul Tawfiq is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hand. Why? Because he, only He knows our hearts. And if He sees in our hearts the sincere search for truth, the sincerity to the truth, and humility and steadfastness, then He, he helps us to, you know, keep uh, treading that path until we, you know, meet our destination. Otherwise, so that's why Hidayat Tawfiq, even after Hidayat al is absolutely necessary. Even once we have the truth through the messengers, Hidayat Tawfiq is absolutely necessary because, you see, um, even um, one of the Prophet's cousins, you know, who made a hijra to Habsha, ultimate sacrifice but there he converted to Christianity and died on Christianity so he accepted prophet and then he deviated from that because he didn't have Hidayat Tawfiq uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, uh, book so even after we have received the the revelation, the message, even once we have been guided towards the truth, to the true message, to the true book, understanding it and being convinced of it and being steadfast on it until we reach our destination requires Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's constant help. And that is Hidayatul Tawfiq. And he gives tawfiq, as he himself tells us, to those who are sincere, those who are committed to the truth, those who are not arrogant, and those who are steadfast in the face of, uh, you know, adversaries because of their sincerity to the truth. So that's why for wajib an al hidayat of idrak al haq la yakunu illa bi'anat Allah subhanahu wa taala wa hidayat hi wa irshadi. So it follows from all that that uh, guidance, whether it is guidance of irshad or guidance of tawfiq, is only from Allah subhanahu wa taala. And that's why, due to this walisrubati has al amr, because of this difficulty, difficulty of being guided to the truth and then recognizing the truth and then committing oneself to the truth and then being steadfast on the truth, on the way to the truth in the face of uh, adversaries, uh, inner and external, internal and external. Because of these difficulties, uh, Musa alayhi salam, the Moses who spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, 
even after listening to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's um, uh, divine speech, in eternal speech, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Rabbi Shrahli Sadri to open his heart to the truth. Why? Because he recognizes the difficulty of this matter in all these aspects. And it is the expression of, or it is the consequence of this difficulty in arriving at the truth, in recognizing the truth, in being steadfast, steadfast on the way to the truth. Because it, uh, the consequence of, all, consequence of all these difficulties, Imam Brazi says that even though Kullul Khalki Yatlabunalida, everybody wants guidance to the right path. And everybody wants to avoid deviation, deviation from the true path. Despite all that, the most of humanity is actually on the wrong path, on the path to on the path which is exact opposite of the truth. Why? Because of all these difficulties. And all this makes it quite clear that husul al hidayah to get to reach the truth and the guidance of both types and knowledge and the recognition of the ultimate truth is ultimately only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and without his help we are helpless and this shows the fu futility of all ultra rationalisms and what, what is ultra rationalism ultra rationalism is the fact that some people think that reason is self-sufficient some people think that they can explain and some even like mutakallimin Think that they can explain everything rationally but they but they at the end of the day we can't explain everything because of our finitude because of our limitations of our understanding in every aspect and this is the case even once the truth has arrived once the messengers have arrived that limitation is still there. That's why we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's constant help. So that's why the relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through worship, through his remembrance is the key to the truth. And the path to the truth is, you know, through his constant worship. So the Prophet ﷺ was ordered to worship him until he reached the ultimate destination, he reached the ultimate truth beyond the limitation of limitations of this world. So if this is what the best of his creation was, you know, ordered to do, what is what is going what you know. What would be our uh, you know what would be our uh, condition, what would be our helplessness in, in the face of all that? So that's, that's, that's what Imam Razi thinks, and he is one of the you know more more uh, ultra rationalist Ashairas. <laughs> So if he thinks that, then, you know, the matter must be a grave matter, a very serious matter. Anyway, um, so we should stop here. Um,
I think we conclude this uh, here and please uh, make dua for uh, the guidance uh, for all of us and uh, also please make dua for the uh, the soul of Imam Radhi uh, may Allah give him the highest stations uh, of nearness uh, uh, to himself and to the truth. Uh, and may Allah elevate his uh, stations and may Allah reward him from all of us Muslims since his days. The best reward for his uh, amazing tafsir and his amazing writings and his jihad um, in the way of the truth. Uh, may Allah guide us all to the truth and give us humility to the truth and may Allah keep us steadfast on the way to the truth and until the day we meet the truth, the reality of all the reality. وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين